this country, you gotta make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the money. That's why you gotta make your own moves. What's happening, YouTube? It's your boy Sock checking back in, man. Shout out, man. Nighttime vibes, just chilling, man. Money make the world go round. Everybody heard that saying. I'm gonna have to disagree because money ain't everything, man. And I'm gonna go and tell you why. So, if you're a millionaire, it don't matter. Once you get locked up, you go from self-sufficient to dependent. If you a uh, bomb. <laughs> it don't matter. Once you get locked up, everybody's on the same ground. You have to depend on somebody. That's why I say, man, cherish your loved ones, cherish your friendships, cherish your relationships in the world because you never know when you're going to be at the bottom and somebody going to have to send you that money. I don't give a damn if you're a millionaire, like I said. So, it's this cat named Slick, man. I don't like a motherfucker in the world. He used to show us pictures and shit of Benzes, Bentleys. Um, Manches, you know, he used to throw all kinds of parties. But as I mentioned, once he got popped, now he got to do a bid. Now you're on the same level as everybody, man. So now he depended on one or two people, man. Slick burned all his bridges. He got two people in the world, his girl and his sister, man. Girl off the muscle burn off. Bad little chick, man. Looked like a magazine model, man. He, every picture he had, he had four or five different girls. As soon as he get popped, his girl burn off. Not only did she burn off, she burn off with some of his money, too. He just had to chalk it up to a loft. But Slick, one of them cash man, certified hustler. So when I say certified hustler, he built an empire in prison, too. We on the unit. Everybody know that Slick is the big man on the unit. He got all the dope. He got all the drugs. When it came to getting his money for a drug, any kind of tune, any kind of weed, he want his money off the muscle. He ain't fronting nothing. He ain't giving out nothing free. He ain't giving out no loans, he ain't letting you sample, none of that shit. So, it's a lot of guys, I ain't gonna lie, in the penitentiary that hate on you or find jealousy because you won't give them nothing. They'll see like a circle blowing or something, and boom, they'll catch wind, like boom, this person got this and that. And it's a lot of guys that try to bomb off you for free, man. Um, <laughs> but Slick wasn't going for none of that shit. And the reason we called him Slick because these same cats, we don't know exactly who, but like I mentioned before in the earlier video, you can write an I-60. I-60 is paperwork. It's like basically a secret paperwork. You can write and say, hey, this cell, this cell moving dope. This cell, this cell got dope. Fold it up, put it in the box. So they think they own something. They gonna go early in the morning, hit your shit like SWAT team, five, six deep. Think they catching you off guard, shit like that. But Slick always had to drop on them two or three days ahead, a day ahead, shit like that. I said they hit Slick about three, four times and never found anything. The last time they hit him, they tore his shit up. I mean, from top to bottom, snatched pictures off the wall, threw his motherfucking pictures on the ground, paperwork was all over his cell. You know, Slick just charged it to the game. He making so much money in the penitentiary, he just like, shit, I just get somebody to come clean it up. As soon as y'all done, he used to be cocky with his smile and all kinds of shit. Boom, he'll come to the day room like, damn, these bitches ain't be snitching. And they hit my shit again. And motherfuckers be like, shit, you know the game, though, Slick, you know how it is. But he was able to do that because he had runners on his team. And he also had guards on his team, too. He got So he got guards on his team, runners on his team, it's his eyes on his team. So he always had somebody to come shoot him a word, a message, and let him know. Like, look, they finna hit your cell today. And boom, he always be prepared. That's just the way Slick was, man. But Slick, I ain't gonna lie, was a selfish motherfucker, too, for the simple fact he didn't care about nobody but his motherfucking money, man. I respect his hustle, not just not the way he did it, because motherfuckers always tried to cross Slick out and never could. When I tell you his cat was smart with it, every time he got a drive, break it down, shoot it out real quick. He had like 10, 15 guys on his team. So boom, you looking for any kind of drugs, you go shoot here, go shoot here, shoot here. But everybody know Slick got the drugs, so that's why they always used to hit his shit. So real talk, when you get to the bottom, like I said, you have to depend on people. And Slick was dependent on his sister and, and his girl burned off. So that left him one person. He burned his bridges with everybody else in the world. So his sister was rocking with him tough. She used to come see him every single month, twice a month, man. Make sure he good. <laughs> they call him out for the regular visitation. Boom, he go down there one day. Somehow he don't end up coming back. So everybody like, what the fuck going on? We catch wind. Somebody popped his operation. He wasn't getting it from the guards. He was getting everything in from his lawyer, his his most trusted person. 
in the world. His sister, that's why his operation at um, lasted so long. He never told nobody about where how he got it in, where he was getting it from, or anything. The penitentiary is messy. One slip up, one mistake, and you got somebody hating on you, man, dropping out 60. So, story go like this, man. Somebody caught wind that Slick was getting his shit in through his sister. And this was the most selfish shit that you can do because that's the only person you depending on, right? So he go to visitation. They waiting on his sister. They waiting on everybody. Then this is how Texas prison play. They already know what's up. So they gonna let everything rock out, man. So boom, she come in thinking this regular finna make the drop. Soon as they motherfucking get ready to end the visit, they get up, slick go to the thing, four, five laws, grab. Two laws, grab his sister, send her to the county jail. So now, Slick locked up and his sister locked up. They pop people on a daily, take family pe family members to jail on, on a monthly basis. I'm lying, I'm dying, man. People, family get locked up all the time behind selfish inmates, telling them to bring in dope, drugs, stuff like that. Don't ever put your family in uh, jeopardy, especially if this is the person you depended on, man. Only thing that happened to Slick is he went to lock up G5. They, they downgraded him. But his sister caught a charge. She looking at 10 years for bringing, that, uh, for bringing drugs into an institution. I believe she ended up pleading out for probation. Thank God they gave her probation for, you know, bringing in marijuana. But psh, you can't do that, man. You can't be selfish like that. Anytime you got the hustler mentality, man, there's a lot of guys down there with the hustler mentality. They don't care about nothing but themselves. They just want their money, their bread, shit like that. Um, so if there's any family members out there watching this, man, always be smart, man. Your loved one down there shouldn't be jeopardizing your freedom, too, when they know damn well how it is. And that's it, and that's all. That's what selfishness gets you, man. Now, the only person in the world that was looking out for you, she and she locked up until she plea out um, to this probation or whatever. And now you G5. His, all, his whole operation went down the drain just like that, man. No more slick. Everybody burned off with his money. Everybody burned off with his drugs. I'm talking about inmates, man, shit. Once you get locked up, motherfuckers be like, oh shit. They secretly smiling because now your shit becomes theirs. You know what I'm saying? Because when they come get you, it's over with. They come get you, um, when they grab you in visitation, you never make it back to the block. Never make it back to the wing, none of that shit. You won't be seen for at least a year, year and a half, and they gonna ship you off to another unit, so. It's a dirty game, man. Money is not everything, man. Cherish your family and your relationships. Don't do nothing crazy, especially if you got a loved one out there in prison that's um, locked up. If they ask you to bring in some drugs, shit like that, man, don't jeopardize your freedom, especially if you know this motherfucker already locked up. Why would you jeopardize your freedom? Now you go from, now you go from helping them out to depending on somebody else to get you out. So now you got two family members locked up. You got him locked up, your sister locked up. I have seen all kinds of mamas get locked up and one of them passed out when they found out uh, the laws was waiting on them. That's how they do. They'll let you make the drop that, you know, once they catch on to shit, they'll let you um, make the drop or whatever. And boom, as soon as the visitation over, you walking out, they grab you. They ain't gonna show the inmate that they grab you because the inmate will go crazy and stare and stuff like that. So don't you think you walking out the door scot free, you think you done got the drugs off you? It's gonna be three or four constables waiting on you at the um, gate. And your ass taking a one way trip to the motherfucking county jail. Not only is you going to the county jail, this is how it work in Texas. You gotta drive at least three or four hours to a unit to go see somebody. And these units are secluded. You're gonna see a house or, or nothing for at least a mile or two. Um, and they do that for a reason, so because if anybody get outside of the gates, they got time to come catch you, man. You're gonna be in a foreign city and a and a pretty much fucked up city. A lot of them small counties, small cities in Texas will hang your ass because they don't see crime like that. So in Dallas, you get caught with marijuana, you might be out in about four or five days. If you get caught in one of those country towns with marijuana, your ass won't see daylight for at least six months, <laughs> straight up, man. But um. That's how that story went, man. They popped his sister, man, and shit. I didn't think she ended up getting probation, man. I'm not sure, but she was facing 10 years behind that shit. And 
Selfishness, man. Selfishness. Money is not everything, y'all. You know, so money is not worth your freedom. Straight up. That's what I'm going to tell y'all. That's just real. Thank y'all for tuning in with another prison story with Sock, man. We motherfucking late night vibe and got the moon out and shit. Also, man, go check out the website transitionbrand.com. Get your I beat the eyes shit. And I will be. I will be vlogging when I go down to the prison. They ain't going to let me the phone. They gonna let me bring the phone in, but I'm going to show y'all a little whatever I can, man. So it's going down. But I appreciate everybody that's rocking with the channel. If you're new to my channel, man, then hit the subscribe button and just ride with us, baby. Until next time, much love, much respect. It's your boy Sock checking out.